son was oh, 20 years ago they had a Garlon 600 rubber vine spray <laughs> but without the yield <laughs> Awesome, so if you haven't got a cup of grab a cup and now go to feed and um yeah be over there in 15 or so thank you everyone for coming welcome to mount pleasant and um it is Dura and biri government country but it's also gordon country <laughs> um so yeah thank you so much for coming um we um, the uni association said let's have a uni day and we thought right well let's do that um so yeah thank you we really appreciate it because you can you can um have the idea but without people showing interest and, and backing you um it turns to nothing so you guys turning up terry mccoska gt thank you so much our presenters which will make a hell of a day um so without further ado um i'd like you to all put your hands together for the Godfather of Printer Hoop Agriculture in Australia. Thank you. Thanks, Garlin. It's great to see so many familiar faces. And thank you to the Nguni Society for putting this on. Uh, it's a breed. I've got, I've been working in South Africa myself since uh, somewhere back in the 90s and uh, I have a lot of friends and a lot of uh, people that I've worked with over there and a lot of them have, uh, well most of them I would say have got in Goonies. Uh, and so it's a breed that I've been interested in for a very long time, even before they got to Australia. Hello. Hello. We are pretty privileged to have GT here. Um, he has, has numerous titles and he said very humbly, I'm just an ordinary man with a lot of knowledge. So thank you very much GT. Welcome to Bowen North Queensland and um, we're looking forward to you sharing your knowledge with us. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, as I said, it's a privilege really to, to bring to you a little bit of the bush and to nature and then reasoning behind a lot of things because we as, uh, I would say, Western type of mindset always think we can change things, uh, we can always uh, do better, we can always, uh, we, we see opportunity and, and we want to go for it, that's a good instinct. Uh, but the biggest thing is we lose perspective. That's the most important thing. We lose perspective and we also lose the ability uh, to observe. Yards and just demonstrate some of those to hear the Nguni story of well its background its history and everything was phenomenal um, its capabilities in Australian herds is just 
bananas to me. I think it's incredible and it's a hugely, like the, the capacity for it to become bigger and better is exponential. <laughs> and what Garland and Jamie are doing and consistently retelling the story of Nagoonie and how useful it is, plus their passion for everything that they do here, that's what's going to sell the breed. I mean, like, that's what's going to take it off. I think it's incredible. A look at that black animal. It's, it's, it's absolutely a picture. Look at the mouth I was discussing with you guys with the, the picture, the, the browser. Look at that black animal going there. She already have a calf and stuff, but look at that quality. She's really top notch. She's top notch because she's feminine. She's sleek. That means the body is it showed that the carving stress that didn't take her down and I believe she's already pregnant again. Look at that combination, look how beautiful this is her calf, this one. Look at how good she feed that calf already. Look at that, the calf is also show the loss. So she's a very, very good mother. Look at the small uh, udder, look at the beautiful clean tail. Look at the, uh, as I say, the total shape of an animal like that. So, so you guys can see what that little cow can do without losing her body condition. And there's no minerals and leaks and stuff, as I understand, to support them. It's just out of nature. That's what they bring. Yeah, I'm interested in getting some of these bulls. So we went to RCS program about five years ago. And Terry was spruiking them up then. Fertility's a big thing for at home. We have a hard time with carbon, right? So. A bit low for the last couple of years, eh? So trying to do something to boost that up. Yeah. I think the day's been wonderful. Yeah, more to come. Yeah, very informative. And uh, yeah, and the food is amazing, amazing. So yeah, it's lovely. I think the day's been very good. I didn't realise so many people interested in the breed. Why do I breed them? I love them. I, 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 I was intrigued with them the first time I ever went to Africa. And um, I, I suppose it could be something to do with the color and the, the variation in them. But at the same time, I realized they got very good eating potential. The meat is very nice. Being a beef eater, well, if you're going to get good grass fed beef, that's the way to go. As we've heard today from GT, they're low input cattle. You can do quite well with them. The one message is that smaller animals can be more profitable. The uh, calving ease and fertility of the Nguni animal can help make that uh, even go further. Most breeds have lost sight of what good breeding is supposed to be about. It's, you know, functional cattle that are low maintenance that can look after themselves a bit. Uh, and the Nguni definitely does that. Days like today, I guess it's a number of things. I mean, obviously it's it's learning, it's it's the information that you that you get, it's it, it's the experience from other people, that networking. I think for me the most important thing about today though is the people. It's about being able to connect with like-minded people, to be sometimes to be challenged with some of your thinking. Um, and just to feel supported, which is usually what I, was something that I always come away with from days like today. We'll give it a quick run through from 2010 with a trip to Africa with Mr. McOsker, with a group of Australians that were um, all come from fairly conventional backgrounds. And um, there was a fair few expressions and some of them not very um, positive about the cattle. But you sort of look at it and you listen to the story and you, geez, this is all right. So I sort of defended them for a few days, bouncing around sand dunes and stuff in the back of Bucky's. And um, after three days, Henry Townsend snuck up and said, mate, you can get them in Australia, right? I said, Jesus, okay. And that's where it started. So we came home and went up, bought a couple of bulls off Harvey. Oh, first I asked Garland if it was all right. <laughs> I came home and said, you've been wanting to breed again and I don't want to breed because they're damned expensive. But I found something that might work. And the worst comes the worst, Meatworks never knocks me back. And if the cost of production is low enough, it'll still be profitable. So that's where we started. 
we knew that we wanted to include cattle in the freckle farm model when we set up to farm differently and to farm without any chemical to really see what we could do to create a truly regenerative farming model that we could be really passionate about and we could create a future for our children. Our first experience was putting the Nguni bull over at Deb's milking cow, so a purebred jersey and a Frisian cow and their progeny, no um, chemical at all, yeah, knocked the ticks, took the fly off them. We still have fly because we're on the coast. The eating quality and because we had the butcher shop, we put so many carcasses through and we actually, those cattle that we put through our butcher shop were bred here on Mount Pleasant. Susie was the reason we went into the breeders because I made a change from uh, central uh, Queensland, just around Chinchilla, and went into high rainfall coastal country. And it was through the push for two things. Number one was our country, looking after the country. It had already been doing regenerative style farming on the other, other areas. Came into this new area, but still wanted to have regenerative farming wanted to improve our country, wanted to get away from chemicals, learned the lesson really hard through time that chemicals are only doing us a whole heap of damage. We have to tell the story. We have to really sell the story in order to get people to understand the benefits of everything we do. So it's not just a ideal meat, it's beautiful meat. It eats really well off grass, but it also is helping our environment because we don't have to use chemical in every aspect of our growth. So now I'm, you know, I keep looking around the corner and say, why the hell wouldn't everybody do it? You know, because it makes sense. Uh, yeah, and the Nguni for us, wonderful temperament. I, I don't say to people they're, do, they're docile because they're not, but they are intelligent. So if you treat them well, they act really well. They go really well. Um, you know, we've got animals we love. Righto. Thank you very much for your attendance, ears and attention all day. It's been a bloody powerhouse day. Thank you. Thanks, Jamie.